hello learners in this third video related to music in india our focus is on the genesis and development of music we have already discussed uh, the different types of classical music forms and in india and the role of music in everyday life we have also discussed the important elements that are relevant as far as music in india is concerned however in this video the focus will be the influences and the factors that shaped the growth of indian music tradition from the ancient times to the present contemporary times we will be able to understand the distinction the factors that contributed in shaping the music to its present form and the challenges in promoting music in india so learners we have started in the first two videos that music has always been a companion to culture the sequence of the growth of music is directly related with the evolution of culture so in the early stages of the development of music it had its manifestations in the swara the musical instrument and in those stages the earlier form of dance forms were integrated during the process of growth we have also started in the previous video about the folk music or the desi music which is an integral part of the music system of india now in this video we will trace the historical development of indian music let me first discuss with you the development during the vedic era culturally indian classical music has taken on a primarily devotional and fundamentally spiritual role in society the role is derived from the vedas specifically the samveda which was considered to be a book on the wisdom of songs and chants which made important and lasting contribution to the cultural aesthetics of music it established the fundamental religious significance of music and the primacy of human voice it places sangeet literally sung together human sound at the center of vedic metaphysics the peculiarities of metaphysics are highly complex especially due to the interpretive nature of the text itself but it essentially advocates the spiritual power of sangeet by tracing it to a nad that is a mystical sound the essence of humanity and from there to om the cosmic sound the essence of brahma the supreme cosmic spirit the samveda is one of the religious texts which was sung and heard it has various melodies and lots of descriptions related to music performances it had established and conceptualized the sangeet rules and established a pervasive cultural aesthetic in under which all musical practices were developed and even the use of instruments was very much evident so we have vedic chants which had a significant influence on the musical style of indian classical music the contribution of samveda is such that it had a powerful impact on the music tradition the text encouraged the development of devotional music for the purpose of religious worship and promoted vocal traditions it established the spiritual significance of music and also the role of instruments in terms of its synthesis with human voice therefore this concept of music and learning through the guru who harnessed the power of music to embody spiritual nourishment and spiritual values of the shishya was very popular during the vedic times so let me move from vedic times to the first most important dynasty that is the mauryan empire under whose uh, era we had lot of literally comp compilation and 
the focus was again on the development of spiritual value of music in the ancient culture. So, music evolved during this time period. We know that music might have been practiced in the early phases of Indian civilization. We have understood that during the time of Vedic period, the vocal, the instrumental and the dance music was fairly developed and shaped. The recite, recitation of Vedic songs was essentially a musical exercise and we do have references even from the Rig Veda regarding the types of music. We have variety of songs, for example, we had Gir, Gatu, Gatha, Gyan, Geti and Sam. These were the different types of songs that are mentioned in the ancient text. They give us an idea about uh, the type of music that was prevalent. In that period, following the Vedic period, we find a continuous growth of music. Music traditions came in a big way and firmly established in the society. It led to refinement and changes in the presentation of music, changes in the classical tradition and we have concrete historical evidences. Especially we have a famous gold coin from the Gupta period. And the coin on one side a boast a figure of Samudra Gupta playing a veena. We also have an extensive musical work from the same time, the Natya Shastra prepared by Bharata. The significant impact of music of this period was that it had a deep impact of the culture of other regions also, for example, Eastern and Central Asia. An Indonesian ballad depicts Ramayana and is clearly influenced by Indian musical traditions. So during this time, various tales involving Krishna, the god child of love and devotion, we depict him playing the veena, delighting in the praise of song of the gopis or his devotees and dancing with the female devotees. Narratives related to Lord Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge, wisdom, music and learning affirms the spirituality of music and portrays the role of music in spiritual transformation and as a channel for communicating with the gods. There is a specific reference of Vinu and Veena and also dances with music in various epics. The epics deepen the association between music and the divine and convey a sense of music which was primarily used for devotional or worship purposes. In addition to this, we have historical sources, the stories and verses from the Puranas and the epics which remind us that the golden age of Hindu culture promoted Indian classical music and it received strong patronage from Gupta dynasty. Music became prominent in rituals, in raising network of temples, in performances and ceremonies in royal courts. Classical music was also influenced by the various texts such as the Natya Shastra, which focused on Sangeet with a new form and advocated as a symbol for cultural growth and development. Music was related with the fourth goal of life that is calm, pleasure or desire, earth, selfless prosperity, dharma, duty and moksha enlightenment and was also developed as a cultural form of bhakti or devotion. So these texts focused on the devotional role of Indian classical music in social ceremonies of the society. Historical texts during this time also focused on the various folk traditions and we get a clear picture on the use and function of traditional musical forms in Indian culture. So learners, we have understood that during this ancient times, music was very much honored. We have regional variations, improvisation from the musicians. We had a chorus, 
which was accompanied by drums, traditional songs and dances were prominent in the celebration and in this activity music played a very very important role. Birth songs celebrate a newborn child to wish them luck and prosperity. Folk songs and dances for wedding festivals which took part which were organized for multiple days they utilized specific music pieces they were songs related to bride and bridegroom related to various ceremonies at home the groom's procession to wedding and also in the music pieces we do find some compositions related to funeral rites. They involved crying songs where the musician mourned the departed soul and was engaged in social activity at such a occasion. Therefore, festival songs were related with various aspects of annual cycle of seasons and religious celebrations. We had music related with harvest, praise of local deities as well as the local events. We had a combination of dhol which is very popular and jhal on auspicious occasions such as on the festival of color of holi. So learners in this video we are trying to understand that music is not just classical in nature, music emerged developed according to the social needs of the society. It was universally used in the earlier phase it was organized in line with the caste system but later on it became more stratified. So from oral traditions, we evolved the musical traditions which was organized hierarchically and was in many times on heredity lines. The musicians of Marg music were generally of higher caste in the ancient times than the musicians of the Desi traditions. Marg music was popular among the higher caste, especially the Brahmins who were involved in temple worship, whereas a Desi tradition performed various roles in local community among lower caste. Men dominated the Marg music and Desi traditions was related with women folk who were generally involved in celebrating their own festivals. Therefore, we find that from the Samveda onwards till uh, the ancient part of Indian history, we have lot of variety of music. The concept of bhajan also emerged which was known as a devotional song in Tamil Nadu in a big way among the higher caste of temple singers. After understanding this evolution of music, let us now move to music aesthetics. The musical style of Indian classical music is a unique combination of learned stylish practices and the aesthetic framework. The Natya Shastra explains in detail the complex working of the style. They examine the holistic conception of music, the chant and the concepts related with dance also. The text also explores the concept of rasa that is emotions. They highlight the relationship of music with dance, the role of emotional experiences in performances and focus on the structural principles. Now after studying about music in ancient India, now let us move to music in medieval India. We do not have many documents available related to medieval India. However, there is a work of Amir Khusro and the in historical information tells us that the music was influenced 
by the various styles of the invaders. The most important work of the medieval period is Sangeet Ratnakar. This text is even referred by practitioners even today. It was composed by Sharang Dev somewhere between 1210 to 47 in the court of Yadav, ruler of Devagiri. Along with this, we have a lot of other works which are related with vocal or instrumental music. Sadkeet Ratnakar describes 264 ragas classified into major and minor categories. The chief merit of this text lies in being the first systematic exposition of various elements of music. From the court of Vijayanagara, we get a Sanskrit commentary on Sharangdev Sangeet Ratnakar written by Kalinath, a courtier under one of the king. So we have various Sanskrit documentaries which give us an insight about the music in India. In 15th century, we came across literary evidences from Gujarat. The first one is called Sangeet Sudhakar and is attributed to Haripal Dev, the ruler of Saurashtra. It is here for the first time that the Indian musical form is divided into Hindustani and Karnatic style. The other text is a Persian work called Gunyat Ul Munya means literally pleasure of desire. The manuscript is incomplete but still the author has given us an idea about the development of music during this time period. The governor of the province of Gujarat under Feroz Tughlaq, this person Gunyat as an author aimed at a compilation of work related to Sangeet in India. They also had focused on the new style of music that has emerged during this point of time. This text is of great value in several respects. It is a commentary in Persian on music and also gives us an idea about the various popular Sanskrit texts of that time. The author has extensively used some Sanskrit work on which this music had developed. In the 15th century, we come across a text called Rak Tarangani, popularly ascribed to Lochan Kavi. It contains illustrations from Jaydev, Geet Kovid and Vidyapati. Rak Tarangani is important as it initiated an alternative system of division of ragas and also gives us an insight about the type of music that developed at that point of time. Music got an impetus under the Sharki rulers of Jaunpur in the second half of 15th century. Sultan Hussain Sharki promoted vocal music by introducing a variant form of rendering khayal. He is also credited with new rag such as Jaunpuri Todi, Sindhu Bhairavi, Sindura and Raslu Todi. So we find that along with Northern India, in Central India also we had music. The court of Vijayanagara was a center of music under its prominent rulers. We have number of music treaties on the southern Indian style which was written by Ramayata, the forerunner of the exponent of South Indian style. It is the most authentic treatise of its kind and is frequently referred by the music lovers. So we have seen that from 13th century to 15th century AD, number of changes took place and it led to a coordinated attempt to bring all music forms at one place. The development of music had attained a new height when Mughals intervened and gave them a lot of patronage. Center of musical studies and practices were located in regional kingdoms. In south, we have the system of parent and deviative modes that is the Janaka and Janiraga existed around the middle of 16th century. The earliest work which deals with this system is titled as Swarmela 
Kal Nidhi. It was written by Rameta of Konda Vidu in Andhra Pradesh. It describes 20 Janak and 64 Janya Ragas. Later in 1609, one Somnath wrote Rag Vibhuti in which he incorporated some concepts of North Indian style. It was in, in the middle of 17th century that the famous work on music called Chaturdhani Pradeshika was composed by Venkatam Kin in Tanjavur. The system propagated the form of Karnatak music. So, we have studied so far that music developed both in the northern part of India and the southern part of India. However, an important aspect of northern music was that it was inspired and sustained by Bhakti movement. The composition of the 16th and the 17th century saint poets was invariably set to music. In Vrindavan, Swami Haridas promoted music in a big way. He is also considered to be the teacher of Tansen, the famous musician of Akbar court. Tansen himself is considered as one of the great exponents of northern Indian style of music. He is credited of introducing some famous ragas, for example, Million Ethodi and Darbari. Raja Mansingh of Gwalior also played a distinguishing part in the growth and perfection of Dhrupad, a variant style of northern Indian music. In the 18th century, music in North Indian style received great encouragement at the court of Mughal Emperor Muhammad Shah. Sadaranga and Adranga were the two great composers of Khayal in, at his court. Several new forms of music such as Tarana, Dandra and Ghazal also came into existence at that time. Moreover, some folk forms of music were also incorporated in the court music. In this category, at that time, we had folk scales as well as thumri and tapa, which developed from the songs related to various parts of India. So, we must understand that in southern India, the text of music enforced a stricter science. In northern India, the text permitted greater liberty. There are several experiments in mixing the ragas carried out in north. So learners, after studying about music in ancient India and medieval India, now let us move to music in modern times. It was the closing year of the 19th century and early years of 20th century that we find a special interest in classical music. This goes to Pandit Vishnu Digambar and Pandit Vishnu Narayan. These two lovers of music dedicated their life and also promoted music among common masses. They traveled extensively, wrote about music and revived the interest of public in Indian classical music. So these music devotees tried to retain the tradition of the music training under Gharana. So we have lot of popular musicians such as Ustad Alauddin Khan who practiced music in Malhar in the small uh, part of Madhya Pradesh. We have Ustad Ali Akbar Khan, Sairod player and Pandit Ravi Shankar, the sitar player. The gharana system of music has contributed immensely to the revival of classical tradition. And uh, I can share with you some of the popular musicians that have contributed to the music system. We have Pandit Bhimsem Joshi, we have Ustad Sadik Ali Khan, we have contribution from Malikarjun Mansoor. So these musicians such as Ustad Ali Akbar Khan had promoted their own gharanas and were the instruments in helping people to relate with the music of India. These musicians performed at international level. We had Pandit Jasraj, Sri Nikhil Banerjee, Ustad Asad Ali Khan, 
पंडित बाल मुरली कृष्ण श्री विलायत खान सुश्री अन्नपूर्णा देवी पंडित राजन मिश्रा हु हैड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इमेंसली इन द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ म्यूजिक इन दिस कंट्री लर्नर्स आई होप दैट आफ्टर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो ऑन इंडियन म्यूजिक now you have understood that indian music is interesting to listen there are lot of variations at the regional level at the national level we have global level musicians in this country who organize concerts in different parts of the world the guru shishya parampara and the gharana system has helped us to keep the music traditions alive in the country we organize music festivals along with various other cultural activities which attract both spiritual tourists and promote cultural and heritage tourism in the country thank you